told you you should run away You'll never find a home When I told you you were dirty Then you should be ashamed
cell frame from the top to have access to your bread.
sometimes I think the Lord has got me out sleep. Oh, Lord, don't forget to pray. Sometimes I think the devil has got me Praise God for praying mamas. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God bless you this morning again for being in the house of the Lord. Our children may be dismissed to go to children's church. Children may be dismissed to go to children's church this time as Holly is meeting you at the door there. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. God bless our mamas. Amen. Praise God this morning. Getting right into our sermon this morning is the Lord would allow us. You know, over the years we've seen some powerful mothers, powerful women throughout history. Women like Mother Teresa, Laura Bush, Nikki Haley, a woman that was the ambassador to the United Nations, a powerful woman that stood up for Israel when the world came against it. Come on. Amen. Condoleezza Rice, roots right here in Mobile, Alabama. Powerful, powerful young lady. Amy Coney Barrett, appointment to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Kaylee McEnany, just 32 years of age from Florida, became White House press secretary. And she didn't take nothing off of anybody. Amen. All of these had a powerful voice in the world and all proclaimed to be born again Christian women. Come on, church. 1 Samuel 16 and 7 says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. But the Lord said,
seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the heart of every man and every woman. God looks upon the heart. Come on, church. Today we honor mothers, women of God, looking at, at the scripture. We see stories where women were the main subject of the story. What God began to bring, I believe, lessons for us to understand. One that stands out to most of us is a widow that had two mites. In Luke, the 21st chapter, it says, He looked up and he saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, of a truth I say unto you. Oh, he was looking for an opportunity for a sermon. Glory to God. Church, he says that he saw this. He said that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have their abundance cast in unto the offering of God. But she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had. Got to understand, church, here's a story that stretches our faith at a time as you read it. It's offering time and the people are giving their offerings. Here's a poor widow that comes and gives everything that she has to the Lord. She's an inspiration to all of us, church, to look at a powerful woman and the faith that she had, church. Listen, she gave everything she had to God. She gave everything that she had. It may have not seem like much to men. It may have not seem like much to those of around them. They had thrown in much. They had riches. They had treasures to give. But he said she gave more than they all. You got to understand church, she stepped out in faith. I said she stepped out in faith. She believed God was the source of all her blessings. She planted those two seeds and expected a harvest in return. Church, we don't have the rest of the story of what happened, but I can tell you to know that the rest of the story is she had faith in God and God had faith in her and God blessed. I'm telling you, my God, church, is a faith for God and he's well able this morning. Church we see also in the book of Esther the fourth chapter verse 14 church it says for thou all together holdest thy peace at this time then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed and who knoweth whether thou art this is this art come to the kingdom for such a time as this church I look at the scripture and first thing jumps out to me it says for if thou hold thy peace at this time then their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place I'm here in church that God says you can do what you do I can use you but if you don't, I'll raise somebody else up. But one way or another, I'm going to get the job done. But I want to use you for such a time as this. I want to use you. God wants to use you in spite of your health situation uh, in spite of your financial situation uh, in spite of your social standing uh, God says I want to use you uh, I'll use you in the midst of it all church uh, look at this uh, one of the stories uh, that stands out as one of the most powerful stories in scripture and what does God do church she wins a beauty contest uh, of all things God uses a beauty contest to raise up church and she becomes queen and church she saves a nation from destruction because she realized that God's call and God's placement upon her life I'm telling you my God wants to use you and he's brought you here for such a time as this so many times 
I believe we get wrapped up in our lives, our everyday routine. And church, we put God on a back burner or on a shelf somewhere and God saying no more. He says, I'm going to use somebody and I want to use you. I'm going to raise up and do a work, church. I'm telling you, this woman became an impact of a powerful generation for God to use, church. And God has a purpose and a plan for your life also. I'm telling you this morning, church, every Every day, God is preparing you for a special time and a special opportunity. I call them God moments. God moments. It's a story that I had seen this week that stood out to me. Of a young man named Brian Anderson. Brian Anderson is driving down the country road. And he saw this little old lady on the side of the road in a Mercedes broken down with a flat tire. And in the midst of that, he pulls off to the side and gets out of his vehicle. And this little old lady, she's standing there. She's scared to death. He's just dirty and just got off of work. His clothes were filthy. She didn't know if maybe he was going to hurt her or rob her. Didn't know what was going to. He could see the fear in her eyes. He says, ma'am, I'm Brian Anderson. Can I help you? She said, well, my tire is flat. It didn't seem to be much, but for a little old lady, it was everything. She couldn't change that tire. So he gets busy and gets the jack and he gets under that car. He's busting his knuckles and he's scratching himself up trying to get that car up. Not exactly familiar with that model. And, but he gets it up and he gets that tire changing and she's finally starting to relax. He told her, get in the car and stay warm. I'll take care of this. So she rolls her window down and he introduces himself as Brian Anderson. She said, I'm Louise Smith. He changes that tire and she is so happy. He puts everything up and says, now I believe you'll be okay now. She said, here, let me give you something for your trouble. He says, no man. See, the money was the least of his concern. He said, just remember one thing. He says, pay it forward. Be a blessing to somebody else. And when you do think of Brian Anderson, pay it forward. She got in the car and she's on her way. And he watched as she got on the way and knew that she was safe. And home he went to go to bed after a long, hard day, as tired as he was, exhausted. And she comes up on a cafe that you know kind of a dingy looking place it wasn't much to be seen to the eyes but she pulls in thinking i need a little bit of refreshing maybe a hot cup of coffee to warm and get dried off from the dampness and the wet in the air and here comes this little girl to the table to wait upon him she brings with her a towel because she could see that the lady had evidently been through an ordeal she dries her face off and, and you could tell the ladies looking at her thinking, beginning to feel sorry if this waitress, eight months pregnant, tired on her feet from a long, hard day. And she introduced herself and served her meal, got her a cup of coffee and she was feeling much better. And the waitress brought her ticket to her and gave, the lady gives her a hundred dollar bill and the waitress turns around to bring her a change and the lady's nowhere to be found. She sees her pulling off the driveway. She goes back to the table and then tears begin to fill her eyes as she reads a note that the lady had left on the table. Says, I just felt like that maybe you needed something. 
And I just want to be a blessing because somebody was a blessing to me today. And there was four $100 bills slid in the napkin behind it. Oh, the girl got to the end of her shift and she's still crying and she gets home and she's just knowing, thanking that they got a baby that's about to be here in just a few weeks and how hard that her husband has worked and how hard things are just to make ends meet and know of the needs that they have for a new baby coming. She sees her husband's already asleep from exhausted in bed. She doesn't want to disturb him, but she just slips in the bed thanking God, thank you for your blessings. She leans over and gives him a kiss and says, everything's going to be all right, Brian Anderson. God's met our needs. You see, we never know. <laughs> we never know what goes around comes around. Come on, somebody. You and I need to understand what God wants to do in our lives. Uh, this uh, this morning, church, uh, there's the, the story of Lois and Eunice, uh, the mother and grandmother. It tells us in 2 Timothy, the first chapter the, of Timothy. Timothy Church, uh, a mother and a grandmother are mentioned here by Paul in writing Timothy. He reminds him of the faith of two women of impact. Uh, hear me this morning church. God has placed mothers and grandmothers in this place to make a special impact upon this world today church. You and I need to understand church. God can use us in the most inopportune time to do the greatest work and opportunity. I'm telling you God, we're a blessed church. Listen, we don't have a lot of information about these women except that they have Shane Timothy in his formidable years church and today church an ounce of mother is worth a pound of clergy I'm telling you God church I want to encourage you even the grandmothers to make a difference and be a person of an impact in your family gotta understand church they plant seeds of faith in their children Seeds of faith in that grandson. We also see another woman, a woman that, that is probably one of the most famous. We don't know what her name was, but it tells us that she was sick, church. This is one of the most exciting stories of the Word of God. If you are a woman of impact, this woman is a great example of what God can do in Word Church. It says in Mark the fifth chapter and verse 25 a woman was there that had an issue of blood bleeding for 12 years and she suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors it says and it spent all she had yet instead of getting better she grew worse verse 27 says that she heard about Jesus. Glory to God this morning, church, that somebody could tell us about Jesus, that somebody could tell our children, or somebody tell our grandchildren about Jesus. It says, church, that there she heard about Jesus. She came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. And it says, church, that because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Listen to me, church. It says in verse 29, immediately she was healed. Her bleeding stopped. She felt her body that was freed from her suffering this morning. I'm telling you, my God, church, is able to do that exceedingly abundantly above what we can think or ask and she believed God church I tell you this morning if we can just get a hold of God and touch God he'll change your whole world you got to understand church we got to trust in God believe in God maybe God's placed somebody in your life it's touched your life. I can tell you my mother, 
My mother was a tough woman. She raised six boys. She had to be tough. Come on. But one thing is, church, that my mother influenced my life in the ministry. She has three preachers that come out of us seven kids. You and I need to understand something. Our mothers have an influence, an impact upon our lives that will last for years and touch many lives through not only their, their touch, but through your touch and through those that they touch. I'm telling you, church, that story about Brian Anderson, I'm telling you, church, my God, he is able this morning by instilling faith in and those around you uh, by pressing towards uh, that goal in God and by giving all that you've got so that God can give you more and God use you more. Amen. I remember Miss McBride that was an elementary teacher in our little elementary school in Jay, Florida. Little white-headed old lady when I come around Somebody this week was making comments that they remember teachers and their lives. And I remember some of those that had an influence upon me. But I thought about Miss Bray Pride and how she taught for three generations kids. Three generations, snotty nosed little kids. But yet, church, you wouldn't think that she would be much of an influence but she taught political leaders how to read she taught powerful businessmen how to read those that would later become lawyers those later that would become state political leaders why church because she did her calling and I'm telling you this morning church I think about that today if you're a mother if you're a teacher if you're a nurse a secretary or a business lady a salesperson or a cashier or a waitress that God can use you and God bless you and let you be a blessing. Make a difference where you are. Be a woman of impact. Be a man of impact. Let God use you where you are. Let God use you in your life. I'm telling you that old song that says He touched me. Shackled by a heavy burden neath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I am no longer the same. I'm telling you this morning God wants to use you statement from Apostle Paul. He said, follow me. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Those words may sound a little brassy, almost arrogant. How could Paul possibly suggest that people follow his example? Aren't we all humans flawed at best? <laughs> But as you look at Paul's life, you become to see the statement in a more positive light. Paul had a dramatic conversion experience and was transformed by Christ. He thought he was doing God a favor by slaughtering Christians. Paul he thought he was the epitome of the religious community. But on that Damascus road, I said on that Damascus road, God got his attention. God got his attention, church. He was simply saying here, I'm trying to follow the example of Christ so closely 
that you can look at me and know how to impact lives as Jesus did. I want you to be impacted in your life just like I was. That woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I could just touch you, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, it'll change my life. Something
stand to your feet this morning, all over this house this morning. I don't want to leave here without I give you opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, all you got to do is ask Him. I believe the Holy Spirit is moving. I believe God's Spirit and presence wants to speak to your heart. Let Him touch you right now. Would you pray this prayer with me this morning? Would you pray and ask God to come into your heart and come into your life? Would you do that with me right now? Lord Jesus, I've lived my own way long enough. I've sinned against others. I've sinned against you. But Lord, today, I'm sorry. And I'm asking, Lord, for your forgiveness. Come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. I surrender all to you. Jesus. If you prayed that prayer, you meant it with all your heart. God's heard that prayer. Thank God this morning for His love, His mercy, and His grace. Trust in Him. If you prayed that prayer, share it with us. Let us rejoice with you. Let us help you to grow in that newfound relationship with Christ. To celebrate a new child. It says the angels of heaven rejoice when even one comes to the Lord. We want to rejoice with you. God bless you. And God richly smile upon you today is our desire. We love you. God bless you. Mothers, we have a gift for you as you go to lead today. Stop my brother Charles there. God love you. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. We love you.